In this video, we're going to go over significant figures, how to count them, how to round them to the right digit. We're going to talk about addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, scientific notation, and we're going to go over some hard examples, some combined operations, and things like that. So the first thing you need to know is that any non-zero number is counted as a significant figure. So 126 has three significant digits, one, two, three. So it has three sig figs. 95 has two significant figures. And 4,873 has four significant figures. What about this one, 404? How many significant figures does this number has? Now, in between zeros, zeros that are in between non-zero numbers are always counted as significant. So therefore, all three of these numbers are significant. So it has three sig figs. So what about 5,006? And this has four significant figures. Now, what about 70,080? How many sig figs are in this number? So the zeros that are in between 7 and 8 are counted as significant. However, the trailing zeros, which is the zero to the right of the 8, trailing zeros are not significant if there's no decimal point. But if there is a decimal point, they become significant. So therefore, we don't have a decimal point, so we only have four significant figures. So what about the number 8,000? How many sig figs are there? So there's no decimal point, so all the zeros to the right of the 8 are trailing zeros. So therefore, this only has one sig fig. 800 also has one significant figure. Now let's say if we put a decimal point, how many sig figs do we have? So now the zeros to the right of the 8 are counted as significant figures. So we have three sig figs in this case. Now what about 800.0? So we count all the zeros, including the one to the right of the decimal point, since all of the zeros are to the right of the 8. So in that example, it has four sig figs. Now what about this one? 50,060 with a decimal point. How many sig figs are in this number? So since we have a decimal, every zero to the right of a non-zero number will be counted as significant. So we have five significant figures. Now what about this one? So all of the in-between zeros and the three trailing zeros to the right of the six, they're all counted. So in this case, we have seven significant figures. Now let's say if we have a very small number, 0 0.0153. How many sig figs do we have? Now the zeros to the left of a non-zero number are known as leading zeros and they're not counted as significant. So these two leading zeros are not counted, even if there's a decimal point. So we only have three significant figures. Now what about point zero zero one zero zero eight? In between zeros are always counted as significant, so that's four. Now what about this one? Point zero 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 one zero seven zero zero. How many sig figs are in that number? So we have two non zero numbers. We have an in between zero, and also we have two trailing zeros, which are to the right of a non-zero number, but the leading zeros are not counted as significant. The trailing zeros are significant since we have a decimal point. So there's a total of five sig figs in this example. Now what about this one? Point zero five zero seven zero zero eight zero. So every zero to the right of the five is going to be counted as significant since we have a decimal point. So we have a total of seven 
significant figures in this example. Now what about numbers in scientific notation? So let's say if you have 2.53 times 10 to the 4, how many significant figures are in this number? So for a number expressed in scientific notation, you could ignore um, this part, the multiplier. So simply count the number of sig figs that you see here. In this case, it's 3. Now what about 3.06 times 10 to the negative 5? So the in between zeros counted as significant, so we have 3 sig figs. And what about 1.000 times 10 to the 8? So all of the trailing zeros are counted as significant, so we have a total of 4 since there's a decimal point. And finally, what about 4.20 times 10 to the negative 7? So all three of these numbers are counted as significant. Now the next thing that we need to be able to do is that we need to be able to round a certain number to the appropriate number of sig figs. For example, let's say if we have 4,257.16. How can we round this number to one significant figure? How would you do it? If you only have one significant figure, that figure is going to be uncertain. Your decision is, should you keep it as a 4 or should you round it up to 5? So what you need to do is look at the next number. The next number is a 2. It's less than 5, so you have to round it down or you're going to keep it at 4. Since we only want one significant figure, everything else is going to be a 0. So we need something that's very close to 4,257. The closest answer that we can get is 4,000. So 4,000 has one significant figure and it's relatively close to 4,257. Now let's say if we want to round it to two significant figures. So the first digit is going to be very certain. We're not uncertain of this um, number. The last digit in a number is the uncertain digit. That's the last non-zero number. So the 2 is uncertain. Should we keep it at 2 or should we round it to 3? So looking at the next number, 5, since we have a 5 or if we had anything greater than 5, that means we got to round up. So it's going to be 4, 3. Now that we have the two sig figs that we want, we're going to add two zeros. So 4,300 has two significant figures, and it's fairly close to 4,257.16. Notice that 4,300 is closer to the actual value of 4,257 than 4,000. 4,000 is further away. The more significant figures that you have, the more accurate your answer will be. Now, how can we round it to three significant figures and four significant figures. So to round it to three sig figs, the first two numbers are certain, four and two. We're uncertain about the five. So should we keep it at five or should we round it up to six? Looking at the next number, it's greater than five. So we need to round it up to six. And then we're going to add a zero. So 4260 is even closer to 4257.16 and it has three sig figs. Now for the next one, if we want to round it to four sig figs, the first three digits are certain. So all you got to do is copy what you see here, 425. The last digit is uncertain. Should we keep it at seven or should we round it up to eight? So looking at the next number, it's a one, it's less than five. So we're going to keep it down at seven. So we're going to say 4257. Now what if we want to round it to five significant figures? So the first four digits are certain. The last one is uncertain. Should we keep it at one or should we round it up to two? Six is greater than five, so we're going to round it up to two. So it's 4257.2. Try this one. 158.1054. Go ahead and round this number to one significant figure, two sig figs, three 
4, and 5. Feel free to pause the video as you work out this example, and then unpause it to see the solution. So if we only have one significant figure, that figure is going to be uncertain. So should we keep it at 1, or should we round it up to 2? Looking at the next digit, we have a 5, so we've got to round it up. So we're going to say 200. So 200 has one sig fig, but it's not too, too far away from 158. Now, if we want two sig figs, the first digit is certain. So we're going to write the first digit. The second digit, we're not too sure. Should we keep it at 5, or should we round it up to 6? Looking at the next number, which is 8, tells us we've got to round it up to 6. Once you get your two sig figs, add a 0. So 160 is close to 158. Now, if we want three sig figs, the first two digits, which are the 1 and 5, are certain. So let's write that. The last digit is uncertain. Should we keep it at 8 or round it up to 9? Looking at the next number, it's less than 5, so we're going to keep it at 8. Now, what about the next one? How can we round it to four significant figures? So if you want four significant figures, the first three digits are certain. So we're going to write 1, 5, 8. The last digit is uncertain. So should we keep it at 1 or round it up to 2? Looking at the next number, 0, 0 is less than 5, so we're going to keep it down at 1. So it's 158.1. Now if we want 5 sig figs, it's going to be 1, 5, 8, point 1. The 0, the last digit, is uncertain. Looking at the 5, that tells us we got to round it up to 1 instead of keeping it at 0. So it's going to be 0.11. Now let's try one more example like this, but dealing with a very small number. So let's say if we have the number 0 0.035047. So go ahead and round this number to one sig fig, two significant figures, three, and four. So looking at the this number, the first digit, the first significant figure is uncertain. That's a three. Should we keep it at three? or should we round it up to 4? So looking at the 5, we need to round it up to 4. So it's going to be 0 0.04. Now let's move on to the next one. If we want two sig figs, the first significant figure is certain. So we're going to keep the 3. Now let's focus on the 5. Should we keep it at 5 or round it up to 6? The next number is 0, which is less than 5, so we have to keep it down at 5. Now, what about three sig figs? What is it going to be? So the first two digits will be significant. So we're going to write 0 0.035. Now, the next digit is the uncertain one. Should we keep it down at 0 or round it up to 1? Looking at the 4, it's less than 5, so we're going to keep it down at 0. So we have three sig figs. Now, if we want 4, we need to keep the first three digits or the first three significant numbers. Now the 4 is uncertain, but looking at the 7, that tells us that it, we need to round up since 7 is greater than 5. So we're going to round the last number to a 5. So by now, I'm pretty sure you have a good handle on these types of problems. It's easy to round when you have a lot of significant figures. But what if you don't have a lot of significant figures? What if you need to round your answer to a number that has more significant figures than the number that you currently have? For example, take 100. 100 has only one significant figure. The zeros to the right are not significant. How can you round this answer to two sig figs if you only have one sig fig? Now think about it. Feel free to pause the video and see if you can come up with the solution. I really want you to think deeply about this one because these are the hard questions that you might see on the test. And they could be quite tricky. So take your time, see what you think the answer will be. What number 
can you write that has two sig figs and that has a value that's 100 or very close to it? So using the technique that we've been using, we know the first digit is certain. So we're going to keep the one. The second digit is uncertain. Now typically we would look at this number. Since it's less than 5, we won't round it up to 1. We're going to keep it at 0. But the next number is going to be 0, and we only have one sig fig, so that technique doesn't work here. So we got to do something else. In this type of situation, you want to bring in scientific notation. It's going to save you from a problem like this. So in scientific notation, we can write 1.00 times 10 to the 2 if we want to. But notice that this has three sig figs, one, two, three. We can also write it as 1.0 times 10 to the 2. Now, this has two sig figs. 1.00 times 10 to the 2 and 1.0 times 10 to the 2, they have the same value. They're both equal to 100. 10 squared means 10 times 10, which is 100. So this number is 1 times 100, that's 100. This is also 1 times 100. But the purpose of writing it in scientific notation is that you can control how many significant figures you, there are. If you want three sig figs, use this answer. But if you want two, use this, which is what we want. Now, what about the number 50,000? How would you convert that into a number that has, let's say, three significant figures. Actually, let's go through the list. Let's say one sig fig, two sig figs, three, and four. Right now, it's already one sig fig. But is there another way we can write 50,000 where it's still one significant figure? And the answer is using scientific notation. So if we move the decimal point one, two, three, four units to the left, this is going to be 5 times 10 to the 4. 10 to the 4, that's 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. 4 times, that's 10,000. 10 to the 4 is basically 1 with 4 zeros, since we have an exponent of 4. 5 times 10,000 is 50,000. And don't worry, if scientific notation confuses you, I'm going to go through some examples in which you can get some practice converting scientific notation into decimal numbers, and numbers in standard notation back into scientific notation. So we'll go over that shortly. So this is how you can put it in scientific notation um, with one significant figure. Now if you want two sig figs, it's going to be 5.0 times 10 to the 4. Make sure you add the decimal point and then add a 0 after that. 5.0 has the same value as 5. So you don't have to worry about rounding here. Now, if you want three sig figs, simply write 5.00 times 10 to the 4. And if you want four sig figs, 5.000 times 10 to the 4. Now, let's try an example that has a lot of significant figures and non-significant figures. So, let's say if we have this number. 3650000. Go ahead and round it to one significant figure, two, three, four, and five. So the first number is uncertain. Should we keep it at three or four? So we're going to round it up to four since the second number is larger than five. After that, we need to add some zeros. So this is going to be 4. And after the 3, there's 6 numbers. So we need to add 6 zeros. This is 3.65 million, which is not too far away from 4 million. If we miss a 0, this would be 400,000, which is very far away from 3.6 million. So you don't want to miss a 0. Since there are 6 numbers here, make sure you add 6 zeros afterward. Now, let's say if we want to round to two sig figs. So the first digit is certain. The second one is uncertain. Should we keep it at six or should we round it up to seven? 
looking at the 5, it tells us to round up to 7. So after 6, we have 5 digits or 5 numbers after that. So we're going to replace those 5 numbers with zeros. Now what about rounding it to 3 sig figs? The answer that we already have has 3 sig figs, so it's going to stay the same. Now, the next problem, that's where it changes. Because this number has 3 sig figs. And if you wanted to round it to a number that has more sig figs that is present than this number, that's when you need to switch to scientific notation mode. So what we want to do at this point is move the decimal somewhere between the first two numbers. In scientific notation, you want a number that is between 1 and 10. So we need 3.65. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We need to move it 6 units to the left. So it's going to be 3.65. That's 3 sig figs. And we're going to add a 0 to get 4 times 10 to the 6 since we moved the decimal six places to the left. Now, if we want five sig figs, it's going to be 3.65, but with two extra zeros. And it's going to still be times 10 to the six. So we have five sig figs now. So now you know how to round a number to any number of sig figs. Now, let's move on to our next topic, addition. Let's say if we want to add 2.314 to 5.23. How can we add these numbers and round it to the correct number of sig figs? The first thing you want to do is you want to align the two numbers. You want to rewrite it like this. And you want to get the exact answer first. So there's an invisible zero at this um, position. 4 plus 0 is 4, 1 plus 3 is 4, 3 plus 2 is 5, and 2 plus 5 is 7. So 7.544 is the exact answer. Now we need to round it. So for the first number, the 2.314, the last number is the uncertain digit, which is in the thousands place. For the second number, the 5.23, the 3 is the uncertain digit, and that's in the hundredth place. So if you have an uncertain digit in the hundredth place and the uncertain digit in the thousandth place, your answer is going to have an uncertain digit in the hundredth place. A technique that can help you with this is to draw a line. So notice that this number only has two numbers to the right of the decimal point, whereas this one has three. So you want to draw a line where your final answer has the least number of digits to the right to the, of the decimal point. So here, this has three digits to the right of the decimal point. This one has two. So your final answer should have two digits to the right of the decimal point. It's the smaller of these two numbers. So this is the number that is uncertain in our final answer. So that's the number we got to focus on. Should we keep it at 4 or should we round it up to 5? So looking at the number to the right, it's less than 5. So we have to round it down. So our final answer is going to be 7.54, rounded to the correct number of significant figures. So let's go ahead and try some more examples. Try this one, 3.45 plus 5.3. So let's write it, let's line it up like this. So 5 plus 0 is 5, 4 plus 3 is 7, 3 plus 5 is 8. So the 5 is the uncertain digit. It's the last significant figure in 3.45. So for that number, it's uncertain in the hundredths place. Now, the 3 is the last significant figure in 5.3. So it's the uncertain digit. So therefore, we're going to be uncertain about the 7, since we're uncertain about the 3.
So the uncertainty is going to be in the tenths place this time. So we're going to draw a line right here. The line is going to be to the right of the last uncertain digit. Not this one, but the one that's close to the left. So therefore, we're uncertain about the 7. Should we leave it at 7 or should we round it up to 8? Looking at the 5, that tells us we have to round it up to 8. So the answer is going to be approximately 8.8. .8. Try this one, 8.2354 plus 9.35. So first, let's get the exact answer. The 4 and 5 is going to drop down. 3 plus 5 is 8, and 2 plus 3 is 5. 8 plus 9 is 17. So we're uncertain about this number and this number. So Therefore, this number will be uncertain. If you're uncertain about the 10,000th place and the 100th place, then your final answer, if you're adding or subtracting, you're going to be uncertain about the 100th place. So let's draw a line right here. So we need to round this number. We're uncertain about the 8. Should we keep it at 8 or round it up to 9? Looking at the 5, we need to round it up to 9. So the answer is approximately 17.59, rounded to the correct number of sig figs. Now sometimes, you might be unsure of where to draw the line. If you're unsure about that, this example might help you. Let's say if we're adding 3.65, 14.1, Three, six. Now where should we put the line? Should we put it here? Should we draw it here? 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 Or here? Where would you put the line? Which line is the correct line to draw? So you want to draw the line in such a way that on the left side of the line you only have significant figures. There's no empty space on the left side. On the right side, you need to have at least one empty space. So draw the line in such a way that there's no empty space on the left, but you have at least one empty space on the right. So let's go through each one first. Let's look at the blue line. If we put it here, it's not going to work because we have empty space to the left. So let's not do that. Now let's say if we put the line here, it's not good because we have this empty space to the left. Now if we put the line here, this could work. We have no empty space on the left, but we have at least one empty space on the right. And that's where you want to put the line. You do not want to put the line here because even though there's no empty space on the left, there's no empty space on the right of it. So you went too far in that case. So you want to put the line where there's no empty space on the left, but there's at least one empty space just to the right of it. So let's add these numbers to get the exact number. 0 plus 6 is 0. 5 plus 3 is 8. 6 plus 1 plus 1 is 8. 3 plus 4 is 7. 7 plus 8 is 15. We need to write the 5, carry over the 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So we have 25.886. And we know to put the line right here. So we're uncertain about the tenths digit. So should we keep it at 8 or should we round it to 9? Looking at the next number, we have an 8, which is greater than 5. So we got to round this 8 to a 9. So then the answer is going to be 25.9. Now let's go over some unusual examples with addition. Let's say if you want to add 530 with 4.63. Try this example and round it to the appropriate number of significant figures. So first, let's add everything. 0 and 4 is 4. The 5 and 3 is going to fall down. So if you add these two numbers, you're going to get 534.63. That's the exact answer. But now, where should we put 
the line. Should we put it here? Should we put it here? Where should we put it? Now, as you mentioned before, you want to put a line next to, you want to draw the line where you have no empty space to the left, but you want to have an empty space to the right. So you want to put a line here. By the way, when drawing the line, you want to put it to the right of the significant numbers. The zero is significant and the four is significant. If the zero wasn't significant, then that could change everything. So we'll go over an example relating to that. But in this case, the zero and the four are significant. So we want to put it to the right of those numbers. And we have an empty space here. So now we just got around it. So looking at the four, which is the uncertain digit, because the last sig fig in 530 is uncertain. We need to round to 4. Should we keep it at 4 or should we turn it up to 5? Since 6 is higher than 5, we need to round it up to 5. So the answer is going to be 535. Now let's see if you have an example that looks like this. 36,500 plus 143.56. Where would you draw the line? Where would you round it to? So the least significant figure in 36,500, or I should say the last significant figure, is the 5. The last significant figure of 143.56 is the 6. So the better way to describe where to put the line is you want to put the line to the right of the the last significant figure that is further to the left. So we want to put the line right here because 5 is the last significant figure of 36,500 and if you compare these two last significant figures you want to choose the one that's on the left side. So you can treat these zeros as being um, non-existent, like empty space, because they're not significant. So now let's go ahead and add the numbers. So it's going to be 36643.56. So the last significant figure, or the uncertain digit, is in the, the hundredths place. So therefore, this digit will be uncertain in the hundredths place. So we got to round to 6. Looking at the 4, we need to keep it down at 6 and not round it to 7. So this is going to be 3, 6, 6, and then everything else will be a 0. So you don't want to stop at 366 because 366 is very far away from the exact answer of 36,643.56. So you want to add two more zeros. 36,600 is close to 36,643. Now, you do not want to add a decimal. If you add the decimal, these zeros become significant. And you don't want that, because that would mean that this zero is the last sig fig, or the, the uncertain digit, whereas 6 has to be the uncertain digit. So therefore, you do not want to put the decimal point. Our final answer should have three significant figures. The 6 has to be the last uncertain digit. So we don't want to put the decimal point. If we do, it's going to be 5 sig figs, and that's not going to be right. But without it, it's 3 sig figs. And since the zeros are not significant, the 6 is the, the last sig fig, which is the uncertain digit. Now let's say if we're adding 3 numbers. And let's say there's plenty of zeros as well. Where would you draw the line? So let's identify the last significant figure or the uncertain digit in each number. For 350,000, the last sig fig is the 5. For 57,000, the last sig fig is the 1. These zeros, which are in between the two non zero numbers, the 7 and the 1, they're significant. So the 1 is the uncertain digit, and the 8 
is the uncertain digit. So when you have a lot of zeros, for, particularly for these harder examples, you want to draw the line to the right of the first uncertain digit that you see. So here's the first one, which is on the left side. You want to draw the line to the right of that number because the answer is going to be uncertain in the 10,000 place. So that's where we have to round it. Now let's get the exact answer. So if we add everything, this is going to be 8, 6 plus 1 is 7, 2 plus a bunch of zeros is 2, this is 4, 0, 7, 5 and 5 is 10, carry over the 1, 3 and 1 is 4. So if we add these numbers, we should get this number as the exact answer. So this 0 should be the last significant figure. Should we keep it at 0 or should we round it up? Looking at the 7, it's bigger than 5, so we have to round it up to 1. So it's going to be 4 and 1. After the 1, everything is going to be insignificant. So these 4 remaining digits to the left of the decimal point, we're just going to replace it with 0. And we're not going to put the decimal point because we only want two sig figs. We want the 1 to be the last significant digit. So 410,000 is very close to 407,042. Make sure your final answer is as close as possible to the exact answer. And at the same time, you want to make sure it has the appropriate number of sig figs. Here's the last example for addition. Go ahead and add 72,000, 4,300, and 160,000. So the question is where to draw the line. So the last significant figure in 72,000 is the 2, for the 4,300 is the 3, and for the 160,000 is the 6. So make sure you draw the line to the right of the first uncertain digit or last sig fig that you see. So make sure you draw the line to the right of the first circle. So right here. Now let's add everything to get the exact answer. So this is going to be 0, 0, 3, 4 and 2 is 6, 7 and 6 is 13, carry over the 1, 1 plus 1 is 2. So 3 is going to be the last sig fig. But should we keep it at 3 or should we round it up to 4? Looking at the 6, we need to round it to 4. So it's going to be 2, 4, and then every other number, we're just going to put 0. So 240,000 is very close to the exact answer of 236,300. But it has the appropriate number of sig figs, two sig figs. So looking at the first answer, we can see that the uncertain digit is in the thousands place. Here it's in the hundred place. And here it's in the 10,000 place. Our final answer should be should have an uncertain digit in the 10,000 place, which is which corresponds to the 6. So that is it for the addition part of sig figs. Now let's move on to subtraction. The rules for subtraction is the same as the rules for addition. So let's say if we want to subtract 4.671 by 2.1. So first, let's get the exact answer. 1 minus the invisible 0 is 1. We could bring down the 7. 6 minus 1 is 5. 4 minus 2 is 2. So the exact answer is 2.571. Now, the last significant digit in 4.671 is the 1. The last significant digit, or the uncertain digit in 2.1 is 1. So we're going to draw the line to the right of the circle that is on the left. So we have two circles. Draw the line to the right of this one. As you can see, we have significant figures to the left, and we have our first empty space or non-significant figure to the right. So we got to round it around 2.5. So the 5 is the uncertain digits. Should we keep it at 5 or round it up to 6? Looking at the 7, it's bigger than 5, so we're going to round it up to 6. So we're going to say the answer is about 2.6. So as you can see, the rules are the same. 
So let's try some more practice problems. Let's subtract 7.463 by 3.58. So 3 minus the invisible 0 is 3. 6 minus 8 is a negative number, so we need to borrow a 1. So let's take away a 1 from 4. So the 4 becomes a 3, and the 6 will now be 16. So 16 minus 8 is 8. Now 3 minus 5 is a negative number, so we got to borrow a 1. So this is going to become a 6. And the 3 is now 13. 13 minus 5 is 8, and 6 minus 3 is 3. So we have 3.883. And let's confirm that with the calculator. If you type in 7.463 minus 3.58, you indeed get that answer. So now, where should we draw the line? The last sig fig for the first number is the 3, and for the second number is the 8. So draw the line to the right of the first circle, which is going to be right there. So 8 is the uncertain digit. 3 is less than 5, so let's keep 8 at 8, let's not round it to 9. So the answer is going to be 3.88. Try this one. What is 200 minus 28.14? So this is one of those unusual examples. Now let's use the calculator to find the difference between the two numbers. 200 minus 28.14 is 171.86. Now, where should we draw the line? For the second number, the uncertain digit is the 4. For the first number, the uncertain digit is the 2. That's the only significant figure we have. So we need to draw it to the right of the first circle that we see on the left. So let's put it right there. So our final answer should only contain one sig fig. Should we keep it at 1, or should we round it up to 2? Looking at the 7, it's greater than 5, so we got to round it up to 2. So it's going to be 2, and then the numbers to the left of the decimal, we need to replace it with 0. So 200 is the only number that we can write that has one sig fig, but that is very close to 171.86, or somewhere close. Granted, we could write it as 2 times 10 to the 2, so that's another way you could write it, but this is going to be the answer. And we need to round up instead of down. 100 is further away from 171 than 200. 200 is closer. And that's all we can do. That's the only way we can round it to one significant figure. Let's try one more like that. So let's say if we have 5,000 minus... 62.413. So first let's get the exact answer. 5,000 minus that number is 4,937.587. So the 3 is the last sig fig for the second number, but the 5 is the only sig fig or the uncertain digit for the first number. So we're going to draw the line to the right of the first circle. So looking at the 4, which is the only sig fig that we have for our answer, should we leave it at 4, or should we round it up to 5? So looking at the next digit, which is a 9, that tells us we got to round the 4 up to 5. So it's going to be 5, and then there's three numbers to the left of the decimal point, so we're going to replace those with zeros. So it's going to be 5,000. We can't say 4,000. Because even though 4,000 has one sig fig, it's, for, it's too far away from 4,900. 4,937 is closer to 5,000 than 4,000. So 5,000 is the best answer that has one sig fig. Now we could write it as 5 times 10 to the 3, which is 5 with three zeros. Now let's move on to multiplication. Let's say if we wish to multiply... 9.6 by 7, where 7 is not 
an exact number, but it's a measurement value. How can we round this to the appropriate number sig figs? We'll talk about exact numbers later in this video. So for multiplication and division, you want to round your final answer to the least number of sig figs that you see in these individual numbers. So 9.6 has how many significant figures? This has two sig figs and seven has one. So the final answer should be rounded to the least number of sig figs, which is one. So first, let's get the exact answer. 9.6 times seven is exactly 67.2. So how can we round this number to one sig fig? So if you only want one sig fig, the first number is gonna be the uncertain number. Should we keep this number at six or should we round it to seven? Looking at the next number, which is a seven, it's greater than five, so we gotta round the first number up to seven. So it's gonna be a seven, and then we we'll only have one number to the left of the decimal after the seven. So we're just gonna replace that with zero. So 70 is very close to 67.2, and 70 has one sig fig. So we can write the answer as 70, or we could say seven times 10 to the one in scientific notation. Seven times 10 is 70, so both answers are acceptable. What about this one? 325 times 75. Feel free to pause the video and work on that example. So first, let's get the exact answer. 325 times 75 is 24,375. Now the first number has three sig figs. The second number has two. We need to round the final answer to the least number of sig figs, which is two. So if we want two sig figs, the first number is gonna be the same. The second number, the last sig fig is the uncertain digit. Should we keep it at four or should we round it to five? So looking at this number, three is less than five, so we're gonna keep it at four. Now the decimal is somewhere over here. So after this four, our last sig fig, the remaining three numbers, we're gonna replace it with zeros. So the answer is 24,000, or we could say 2.4 times 10 to the fourth power. If we move the decimal one, two, three, four units, then it's gonna to be to the fourth power. So both of these numbers have two sig figs and 24,000 is fairly close to 24,375. So what's the answer for this one? So if we get the exact answer first, it's gonna be 10.074. Now, where should we round it to? 4.38 has three sig figs, 2.3 has two, so our final answer should contain only two. So the first number is gonna stay the same. The second number is zero. We're gonna keep it at zero because this number is zero. Now we have 10. 10 only contains one sig fig. But if we put the decimal point, now it has two sig figs, so and that's gonna be our answer. We could say 10, or we could say 1.0 times 10 to the first power. Both of these two numbers is equal to 10, and they both contain two significant figures, which is close to 10.074. Try this one. The first thing you should always do is you should always get the exact answer first. If you multiply these two numbers, you should get 144.41492. So the first number has four sig figs. The second one has five. So for multiplication, we need to round it to the one with the least number of sig figs. So we want four sig figs. So we're gonna keep the first three digits, one, four, four. The last one, the fourth sig fig, is the uncertain one. So looking at the next number, it's one, it's less than five, so we're gonna keep the four. So we're gonna say it's 144.4. Now here's the last example for multiplication. Try this one, 4,000 times 8.17. 
So let's get the exact answer first. So the exact answer is 32,680. So 4,000 only has one sig fig. 8.17 has three. So our final answer should have only one sig fig. So what should that number be? So the three is the uncertain digit. Should we keep it at three or round it up to four? Two is less than five, so we're going to keep it at three. The other four numbers, which is to the left of the decimal point, we're going to replace with zero. So we're going to say it's 30,000, or three times 10 to the fourth power. So 30,000 is not too far away from 32,680, but it does have one sig fig. So we can write the answer in these two ways. Now let's move on to division. The rules for division is the same as that for multiplication. So let's say if we want to divide 34.7 by 3.1. So just like before, the first thing you want to do is get the exact answer. If you divide these two numbers, you should get 11.193548 and so forth. Now the first number has three sig figs, the second number has two, so you want to round your final answer to the least number of sig figs, so that's two sig figs. So the first number is going to be the same. The last sig fig is based on this number, which one is less than five, so we're going to keep it at one and not round it to two. So the final answer is simply going to be 11. How about this one? 536.3172 divided by 13.2. So let's see what that's going to be equal to. So the answer is 40.6300991. So this number has three sig figs, and this one has seven. So we're going to round it to the smaller one, the three sig figs. So the first two sig figs is going to be the same. These are certain digits. The last sig fig is the uncertain digit. So this three is less than five, so we're going to keep the six and not round it up to seven. So it's going to be 40.6. That's our final answer for this example. Now let's try one unusual example. So let's try 250,000 divided by 3.176. So this is going to be 78,715.3648. So this number has four sig figs. This one has two. So we need to round our final answer to two sig figs. So we're going to keep the seven. Eight is the last sig fig, or the uncertain digit. And looking at the next number, it's bigger than five, so we got to round it up. So instead of keeping that eight, we're going to round it to nine. And the three remaining digits to the left of the decimal, we're going to replace it with zeros. So it's going to be 79,000 which is the same as 7.9 times 10 to the fourth power. So both numbers have two significant figures, and 79,000 is very close to 78,715. So 79,000 is the answer for this problem. Now let's work on some examples where we have multiple operations. So let's say if we wish to multiply 4.3 times 5.231 plus 6.814. Now the first thing we want to do is get the exact answer. So according to the rules of order of operations, perhaps you heard of PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction, you want to multiply before you add. 4.3 times 5.231, the exact value is 22.49. 3, 3. Now if we add the numbers, our final exact answer is 
So now we need to look at the sig figs. Now looking at the first operation, which is multiplication, 4.3 has two sig figs, 5.231 has four sig figs. So we need to round this answer to two sig figs. So that's going to be about 22, since the 4 is less than 5. Now, you don't want to add 22 to 6.814. Rather, you want to keep track of the sig figs. You want to use the exact answer to get this value. You don't want to say 22 plus 6.814, which is 28.814. If you do that, you're going to get the wrong answer. Don't do it. Always get the exact answer first but use the intermediate values to keep track of the sig figs. So therefore, since the 22.4933 number, since it should only have two sig figs, this number is the uncertain digit. Now this one has four sig figs. Since we're dealing with addition, we need to line it up, so to speak. So let's do that here. And our goal is to find out where we should round it. So make sure to use the exact answers. So when we add it, we're going to get 29.3073. Now for 6.814, the uncertain digit is the last sig fig, it's the 4. For the 22.4933, that answer should be rounded to two sig figs. So this 2, the second sig fig, is the uncertain digit. So our line should be to the right of the first circle that we see, the first uncertain digit. So we need to round our final answer to two sig figs. Now looking at this number, it's less than five. So we're going to keep the last sig fig at nine, and we're not going to round it up to zero or 30. So our final answer is 29 for this example. So let's try this one. 7.35 times 4.265 plus 7.34. 7.35 times 4.265. The exact value for that is 31.34775. And let's add it to 7.34. So the final exact answer is 38.68. 775. Now this number has three sig figs and this one has four. So for the first step, which is multiplication, we need to round it to the least number of sig figs. So that's three sig figs. So the uncertain digit is at the three. This one has three sig figs, but since we're dealing with addition, we need to line it up. So let's line up the last two numbers. So for 7.34, the 4 is uncertain, and for 31.34775, the 3 is uncertain. So the line is going to be to the right of the first uncertain digit, or the first circle. And so we know the final answer is 38.68775. So we need to round it at this point. So looking at the 8, that's greater than 5, so we need to round the 6 up to 7. So the final answer is going to be 38.7. The uncertain digit is in the tenths place, which should be the same for the final answer. Let's try this example. 8.46 minus 5.312. Let's divide it by 2.8. So first we have to work with the numerator. Let's perform subtraction and let's line it up. So what is 8.46 minus 5.312? So the exact answer is 3.148. So the 6 is the uncertain digit and the 2 is the uncertain digit. So we're going to draw the line to the right of the first uncertain digit, or the first circle that we see. So even though 3.148 is the exact answer for the first part, if we had to round it, we would need to round it to 3.15.
which has three sig figs. But remember, don't use the rounded answer to get the exact the final answer. Use this value. So 3.148 divided by 2.8 is going to be 1.124286. Now we need to use this number to keep track of the sig figs. So this value should have three sig figs, which means that the uncertain digit is the 4. 2.8 has two sig figs. Since we're dealing with division, we need to round the final answer to two sig figs. So the final answer is just going to be 1.1. 1 .1. Try this one. 8.431 plus 9.25 plus 12.6 divided by 4.7. So let's add the three numbers first. So if we add the three numbers, the exact value is going to be 30.281. So for the first number, the 8.431, 1 is the uncertain digit, and here it's 5, and here it's 6. So we're going to draw the line to the right of the first circle. So the rounded answer should be 30.3. So the rounded answer has three sig figs, but don't use the rounded answer. Make sure you use the exact answer. So 30.281 divided by 4.7. This is going to be 6.44277. So you want to get enough digits. There's more numbers after the 7, but we don't need that much. So 30.281 it should be rounded to three sig figs based on what we see here. And 4.7 has two sig figs. Since we're dealing with division, our final answer should have two sig figs. So this is less than five, so we're going to keep this at four. So the final answer is going to be 6.4. Let's try this one. 5.312 times 2.86 divided by 19.3 minus 17.2. So let's multiply the two numbers on top. So that's going to be 15.19232. And if we subtract the two numbers on the bottom, 19.3 minus 17.2. that's 2.1. So both of these numbers are uncertain. So we got to draw the line to the right of the uncertain numbers. So this is going to stay 2.1. So this should have two sig figs and this number should have three sig figs. This number has four, this one has three, so for multiplication, we need to round this value to three sig figs. So let's divide 15.19232 by 2.1. So that's going to be 7.234438. So we're dividing two numbers, one with three sig figs, the other with uh, two sig figs. So we got to round the final answer to two sig figs. So it's just going to be 7.2. So you have to keep track of the sig figs for every step whenever you have these complicated combined operations. Here's another one for you. 4.831 divided by 2.1 plus 76.381 divided by 0.364 plus 0 0.9830 divided by 0 0.215. 
So let's divide each number first. 4.831 divided by 2.1. That's about 2.300476. I'm not going to write all the numbers, just enough of them, though. 76.381 divided by 0.364. That's going to be about 209.8379. And then for the last one, 0.983 divided by 0.215. That's going to be 4.57209. So now let's keep track of the sig figs. So for the first part, we're dividing. The first number has four sig figs. The second one has two. So this answer should have two sig figs. The rounded value should be like 2.3. Now for the next one, we have five sig figs and three sig figs. So this one should be rounded to like 210. For the last one, here we have four sig figs and three sig figs. So it should be rounded to three sig figs. Now we need to perform addition. So let's line it up. So we have 2.300476 and then 209.8379. And 4.57209. Okay, let's add these numbers. So you should get 216.8379. Six, six. Now for this number, we should have two sig figs, so the three is the uncertain digit. For this number, it should be three sig figs, so the nine is uncertain. And for this number, it's three sig figs, so seven is uncertain. So we need to draw the line to the right of the first circle, the first uncertain digit, which is here. So we got to round our final answer to three sig figs. So looking at the seven, we need to round the 6 to a 7. So our final answer is going to be 217. Now let's say if you want to find the average of two numbers. Let's say you want to average 8.4, 3.21, and 5.436. You would have to add them up and divide by 3 exactly three. Now how would you round this operation to the appropriate number of sig figs? Now this is one exception to the uh, significant figures rule. If you're dealing with an average and if you're dividing by an exact number, then you don't count this number as one sig fig. Exact numbers have an infinite number of sig figs. So that's one exception to the significant figures rule. So when we divide we're not going to base our answer on one sig fig. We're going to base it on what we get in the numerator. So let's add the three numbers first. You should get 17.5. 046. In this example, the 6 is uncertain, the 4 is uncertain, and the 1 is uncertain. So we need to draw the line right here. So our intermediate answer should have three sig figs. But let's divide the exact value of 17.046 by 3. So the exact average is 5.682. But we're not going to round it to one sig fig we're going to round it to three sig figs since exact numbers have an infinite number of sig figs. So if we round our final answer to three sig figs, it's going to be 5.68. Now we're going to spend some time using numbers in scientific notation. But before we do, let's review how to convert a number in scientific notation into decimal form and vice versa. So let's say if you have 3.4 times 10 to the third. 
what is this value in standard notation? Whenever you have a positive exponent, it's going to be a large number. 10 to the third is 10 times 10 times 10. That's 1,000. So what you're really saying is 3.4 times 1,000. It's a 1 with three zeros. 3.4 times 1,000 is 3,400. So what you could do is move the decimal point three units to the right, and you can get 3,400 that way. So go ahead and convert these numbers into standard notation. So let's start with the first one. 4.5 times 10 squared. 10 squared is 100. That's 10 times 10. 4.5 times 100 is 450. Or you can move the decimal point two units to the right and then add a zero here. So it's 450. Now 3.78 times 10 to the fourth. Let's move the decimal four units to the right. One, two, three, four. So it should now be here, and we need to add two zeros. So this is the same as 37,800. What about the last one? We need to move it five units to the right. So if we start with 1.70, this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we need to add three zeros. So it's going to be 170,000. Now let's say if we have a negative exponent. Try these. 1.36 times 10 to the minus 2. 4.2 times 10 to the negative 3. 5.61 times 10 to the negative 5. And 6.8 times 10 to the minus 1. Go ahead and convert it into standard notation. So let's start with the first one. 1.36 times 10 to the negative 2. We need to move the decimal two units to the left. So this is going to be 0 0.0136. Now 4.2 times 10 to the minus 3. We need to move the decimal three units to the left. So 1, 2, 3. So we're going to add two zeros, and it should be here now. So the answer is going to be 0 0.0042. Now for this one, we need to move the decimal five units to the left. One, two, three, four, five. So we need to fill these with zeros. And so it's going to be 0 0.0000561. So the decimal, it was here. We moved it one, two, three, four, five. Now the last one, six point. 8 times 10 to the minus 1, we just got to move it 1 unit to the left. So it's simply 0.68. So now let's work backwards. Let's convert a number in standard notation into scientific notation. So let's say if you have 400, 5,700, 365,000, and one five eight zero 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 zero. Go ahead and convert these numbers into scientific notation. So we need to move the decimal two units to the left. And because we're dealing with large numbers, the exponent is going to be positive. So we know this is going to be four times ten to the positive two. Now for this one, we need to move the decimal three units to the left. We want the decimal to be between the five and the seven. In scientific notation, this number has to be between one and ten. So this is going to be 5.7 times 10 to the third power. Now for the next one, we need to move the decimal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units to the left. So it's 3.65 times 10 to the 5. What about the last one? What's the answer? So this is 3 units, 6, 7, 8. So this is going to be 1.58 times 10 
to the eighth power. Now let's try a smaller number. So let's say if we have 0 0.014, 0 0.0036, 0 0.1784, 0 0 0 0 0 0.00052. So since we're dealing with small numbers, the exponent is going to have to be negative. So we need the decimal to be between the 1 and the 4. So we need to move it two units to the right. So this is going to be 1.4 times 10 to the minus 2. This original number is the same as 0 0.014 times 10 to the 0. Whenever you move the decimal point to the right, the exponent decreases. It went down by 2 from 0 to negative 2. In the case of a large number like 1500, if you move the decimal to the left, in this case, it, the exponent is going to go up from 0 to positive 3. Now we're going to use that fact when solving questions in the future. So make sure you're aware of that. If you move the decimal to the left, the exponent is going to go up. If you move it to the right, it's going to go down. So in this case, we're moving the decimal point 3 units to the right. So it's going to go down by 3 units from 0 to negative 3. Now for the next example, we just need to move it 1 unit to the right. So it's going to be 1.784 times 10 to the negative 1. For the last example, we need to move it 3, 6 units to the right. So this is going to be 5.2 times 10 to the negative 6. Now let's say if you want to add two numbers in scientific notation. How would you do it? And how would you round to the appropriate number of significant figures? If the multiplier is the same, you can simply add the numbers in front. You can add 4.23 and 5.1 because they're like terms. It's like adding 3x plus 4x. You can say 3x plus 4x is 7x since 3 plus 4 is 7. If the multipliers were different, you can't add them. You can't add 3x plus 4y and say it's 7xy. It just doesn't work. To add the coefficients, the terms must be like terms. So we have like terms here. So we can add 4.23 and 5.1. So let's line it up. So 3 is the least significant figure in 4.23, or it's the uncertain digit. 1 is the uncertain digit in 5.1. So we need to draw the line to the right of the first circle. And if we add these numbers, it's 9.33. So this is less than 5, so we're going to keep this number at 3 and not round it up to 4. So it's going to be 9.3 times 10 to the third power. We need to round it to two significant figures. Now, what would you do if you had to add two numbers in scientific notation that contain different multipliers? So we have two options. We need to change either the 4 into a 3 or change the 3 into a 4. Then we can add the coefficients, so to speak. Right now, we can't add them. We can't add 3x and 4y, so we can't add 3.6 and 2.3. So we have to adjust it. Now, if you change the 4 into a 3, you're going to get an answer where you're going to have to change the 3 back to a 4. So you want to change the smaller exponent into a larger exponent. If you do that, you won't have to change it back. It's going to require less work. So let's convert the 3 into a 4. So if we want to increase the 3 to a 4, should we move this decimal to the left or to the right? Whenever you move the decimal point to the left, the exponent will increase. If you move the decimal point to the right, the exponent will decrease. Now let's understand why. Let's move the decimal point to the left. 2.3 is the same as 0.23 times 10. Do you agree? If you type in 0.23 times 10 in your calculator, you're going to get 2.3. So this is equivalent to this. So we can replace 2.3 with 0.23 times 10. Now we still have the 10 to the third. 
So let's rewrite that. Now 10 is the same as 10 to the first power. Whenever you multiply two common bases, you can add the exponents. 3 plus 1 is 4. So this is the same as 0.23 times 10 to the 4. So as you can see, when we move the decimal point one unit to the left, the exponent is going to go up by 1 from 3 to 4. So now we can add the two numbers. So we can add 3.6 times 10 to the 4th with 0.23 times 10 to the 4th, now that the multipliers are the same. So let's line it up. 3.6 plus 0.23. This is going to be 3.83. So the 6 is the, the uncertain digit, and 3 is the uncertain digit in 0.23. So let's draw the line to the right of the first circle. So we're going to round this to 3.8. So our final answer is 3.8 times 10 to the 4th power. So that's how you can add two numbers in scientific notation if the multipliers are different. And now you know how to round it to the appropriate number of significant figures. Consider this example. 4.231 times 10 to the minus 5 plus 7.6 times 10 to the negative 6 plus 2.73 times or 2.731 times 10 to the negative 4. Go ahead and add the three numbers. So let's start with the smallest number and convert it to the largest number. We need the exponents to be the same. So which of these is the smallest number? Well, which one has the lowest value? It's not negative 4, it's negative 6. On a number line, negative 6 is to the left of negative 4. So on the left side, the numbers have a lower value. So with respect to a number line, we're going to change negative 6 into negative 4 and negative 5 to negative 4. So to change negative 5 to negative 4, we need to move the decimal one unit to the left. Remember, if you move the decimal to the left, the exponent is going to increase by 1. So we're going to add 1 to negative 5. So it's going to be 0 0.4231 times 10 to the negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4, which is what we want. Now, for the next one, we're going to take this number and convert it to a large number. We need to convert it to negative 4, so we're going to have to move two spaces to the left. So it's going to be 0 0.076 times 10 to the negative 4. Now the last one, we're going to keep it the same way. Now that we have the same multiplier, we can add the numbers. So let's line it up. We have 0.4231 plus 0 0.076 plus 2.731. So if we add the numbers, the 1 is going to drop down. 1 plus 6 plus 3 is 10. So let's carry over the 1. 3 and 7 is 10, plus 2 and 1 is 13. Let's carry over another 1. 4 and 7 is 11, plus 1 is 12. So let's carry this one over. And so it's going to be 3.2301. Let me confirm with the calculator to make sure my math is correct because mistakes do happen. And it is. So now we need to know where should we round it. So 1 is the uncertain digit in 0.423. 6 is uncertain, and this one is uncertain. So we need to draw the line here, which incorporates the 0. So then it's going to be 3.230 times 10 to the minus 4. So this is the final answer. Now what about multiplying two numbers in scientific notation? 
What's 1.5 times 10 to the 2 multiplied by 2.13 times 10 to the 3? Now first, let's calculate the answer. Let's multiply 1.5 and 2.13. And then we're going to multiply the bases, 10 squared and 10 to the third power. So 1.5 times 2.13, that's going to be 3.195. And to multiply 10 squared by 10 cubed, we need to add the exponents. 2 plus 3 is 5, so it's 10 to the fifth power. Now, how should we round it? For multiplication and division, we need to round to the least number of sig figs. Here we have two sig figs, and here we have three significant figures. So our final answer should contain three sig figs. I mean, not three, but two sig figs, the small of the two values. So we're going to round the final answer to 3.2. This is the uncertain digit, and because we have a 9, we need to round up to 2 instead of keeping it at 1. So it's going to be 3.2 times 10 to the fifth power. Try this one. 1.316 times 10 to the third power multiplied by 3.4 times 10 to the sixth power. So first, let's multiply 1.316 times 3.4. So that's going to be 4.4744 times 10. And let's add 3 plus 6, which is 9. So in this number, we have 4 sig figs, and here we have 2. So we got to find our final answer to the least number of sig figs, which is 2. So it's going to be 4. Point. Now, this is the uncertain digit. Should we keep it at 4, or should we round it up to 5? So looking at the next digit, 7 is greater than 5, so we're going to round it up to 5. So it's going to be 4.5 times 10 to the ninth power. So that's the answer for this example. Try this one. 8.46 times 10 to the 4th power multiplied by 6.7 times 10 to the third power. So just like before, let's multiply 8.46 by 6.7. So that's going to be 56.682. 10 to the fourth times 10 to the third is 10 to the seventh. 4 plus 3 is 7. Now, in this case, what number should we round it to? But before we do that, before we round it to a certain number, we need to put this in proper scientific notation because we have a number that's greater than 10 and we want it between 1 and 10. So let's move the decimal one unit to the left. So it's going to be 5.6682 times 10 to the eighth power. Whenever you move the decimal one unit to the left, the exponent is going to increase by 1. So now let's see where we should round it. So for this one, we have two sig figs. And in 8.46, we have three sig figs, so we got around the answer to two sig figs. So it's going to be 5.7 times 10 to the eighth. Now let's try an example that is associated with division. So go ahead and try this example. So the first thing I would do is divide 9.836 by 2.3. And so that's going to be 4.27652 times 10 to the... Whenever you divide the exponents, you have to subtract them. So if you divide 10 to the 8 by 10 to the 3rd, it's going to be 8 minus 3, which is 5. So it's 10 to the fifth power. Now we need to round it. So in this number, we have two sig figs. Here we have four sig figs. 
So the final answer has to contain the smaller of the two whenever you're dealing with addition. I mean, not addition, but whenever you're dealing with uh, multiplication or division. So we need two sig figs. So the first one is a certain digit. The last sig fig is uncertain. So looking at the 7, we need to round it up to 3 instead of keeping it at 2. So it's 4.3 times 10 to the 5th power. So this is going to be the last problem for today. So this is going to be a problem with combined operations. All in scientific notation. So let's add 4.6 times 10 to negative 8 with 3.16 times 10 to negative 7. Before we can add those two numbers, we need to make sure the multipliers are the same. So which number is smaller, negative 8 or negative 7? On a number line, negative 8 is to the left of negative 7. So let's convert negative 8 into a negative 7. We can do that by moving the decimal point one unit to the left. If we do that, it's going to be 0.46 times 10 to the negative 8. I mean, not negative 8. It's going to be negative 7 now, since we need to add 1 to the exponent. Negative 8 plus 1 is negative 7. And this is going to be added to 3.16 times 10 to the minus 7. So now that the multipliers are the same, we can add 3.16 and 0.46. 6 plus 6 is 12. Carry over the 1. 1 plus 1 plus 4 is 6, so we have 3.62. So it's going to be 3.62 times 10 to the minus 7. Now, this number is the uncertain digit, and so is this one. And the line has to be to the right of the uncertain digit, which it is in both cases, so we can leave it as 3.62. Now let's focus on the two numbers in the bottom. So let's convert the 4 into a 5. So we need to move the decimal point 1 unit to the left. So it's going to be 0.521 times 10 to the 5. So we have 3.6 minus 0.521. If we subtract these numbers, let's use a calculator. 3.6 minus 0.521 is 3.079. So the 6 is the least significant number, or the uh, uncertain digit in 3.6. 1 is the uncertain digit. So we're going to put the line to the right of the first circle that we see. So we need to round it to 3.1. Our answer should have two sig figs. So it's going to be 3.1 times 10 to the 5. So remember, this is 3.6 times 10 to the 5. And this number is 0.521 times 10 to the 5. So this is going to carry over. Anytime you move the decimal to the left, add 1 to the exponent. So now at this point, we could divide the two numbers. By the way, I almost made a mistake. We need to use the exact value, not the rounded value. The exact value is 3.079 times 10 to the 5th power. But the rounded value is 3.1 times 10 to the 5th power. So make sure you use the exact answer, but keep track of the sig figs. So the rounded value should be 3.1, which means that this number should have two sig figs. And this one, it was an exact answer. We didn't have to round it, so it's three sig figs. Now we can divide the two numbers. So 3.62 divided by 3.079 that's equal to 1.1757 and now for the exponent it's going to be negative 7 minus 5. Negative 7 minus 5 is equal to negative 12. 
Now we need to round it. So this number is accurate to two sig figs. So therefore, our final answer should contain only two sig figs. So 1 is the uncertain digit. That's the number we have to round. So because of the 7, we need to round up. So it's going to be 1.2 times 10 to the negative 12. So remember, when you're adding or subtracting, make sure um, to line up the numbers. And draw the line to the right of the first circle or the first uncertain digit that you see. Now for multiplication or division, make sure you round your final answer to the least number of significant figures. So that is it for this video. I hope you found it to be educational. It was a very long video, but I hope these examples help you to understand how to round to the correct number of sig figs whenever you're doing any type of combined operation. So thanks for watching and have a great day.